Here's an example of a PNID where you would have symbols such as FO, FC, FLTC, FLTO and just FL. All these are control valve failure modes. Let us look at these amazing examples of how you can design a control valve to fulfill these needs. So for a control valve, there are three secret parameters that you need to understand. The first, second and third of them are interrelated to each other. The first one being is the air supply design. The second one is the flow path and the third one is the actuator type. Let us look at the first secret. So the air supply design is something where you have to see that if the air, this is a direct acting actuator and a direct acting valve. So here, when you give an air supply, what is resisting the air supply? It is the spring assembly. Now imagine this to be like a seesaw. Here, the air supply has to overcome the friction of the spring assembly in order for the valve to function. So air supply has an upper hand. But now imagine in the opposite direction where the air supply has failed. So the spring assembly is going to now have an upper hand and the spring assembly will direct the valve to its failure mode, which could be fail open or fail close. Now let's look at interesting part, which is that air supply design, we can say as a thumb rule is basically opposite to the failure mode. So for a fail close valve, your air supply has to be air to open. So in case of air failure, it will go to close because of the spring. Similarly, for fail open, the air supply always has to be air to close. Remember this. Now let us look at the second amazing secret, which is the flow path. Here, imagine that the flow is going in the direction in which you want to close the valve or open the valve. Won't it help? Example here, the fluid flow is actually producing a pressure to put the plug in the opposite direction or in the top direction to open the valve. So for a fail open valve, you should have the flow under the valve for a globe valve. And similarly, fail close should be for flow over the valve in order that the flow helps to close the valve. So in a simple way, you can say that as a thumb rule, the flow should assist the failure mode. Now let us look at the third amazing part of it, which is the actuator type. Now here, a lot of engineers make mistake. For example, if it's an electrically operated valve or a double piston operated valve, you can't say the failure mode is fail open and fail close. That answer is absolutely wrong. You need to look and understand the operation of the valve. Will the valve be really able to provide it? An electrically operated valve usually has the failure mode as fail last. Now this is not only sufficient to mention fail last. Why? Let us look at that. Fail last is further divided into fail last drift open and fail last drift close with an example in PNIDs like FLDO and FLDC. Let us understand this amazing example. So here, if you see the air supply is going to come from here and the air supply is going to rotate the piston or basically move the piston, but there are no springs attached to it. Do you see that? So what is going to happen here is if you want fail last drift close drift, meaning eventually it will lead to close. How? Because of the fluid flow. So just as in this is an hypothetical drawing, but an example is basically the fluid flow is going to assist the plug to get to its failure close mode if it's a globe valve. Similarly, the fail last drift open, the fluid flow will assist the plug to get into its open position. So eventually the valve will either open, which is drift open or close, which is called as drift close. Now we look finally into the conclusion of all of these things. The failure action is basically dependent on the type of valve. If it's a direct acting spring loaded control valve, remember the air supply always has to be opposite to the failure action. That is an air to open for fail close and air to close for fail open. The fluid flow must always assist the fail direction. If it's a double acting actuator, do not mention just fail close, fail option. Usually you have to come up with the options such as fail last drift open, fail last drift close. And remember the flow should always assist the failure mode. Finally, there is something called as fail lock, where you use special devices which are added to control wall, which actually protects the air or the fluid inside to trap out. So the last position is where the control wall is locked. I hope you've liked this video. Please subscribe so next Saturday we can meet and learn another new video. Thank you and have a great day ahead.